Welcome back. Well, all the talk today in policy is this tax cut. The government is uh, switching tack on. We knew this for some time to small and medium businesses instead of big business because of the reality of the Senate. Earlier, I spoke to Liberal MP and former Assistant Treasurer Michael Suka. Well, Tom, I mean, the message to small business is we're backing you in. We want you to grow and invest your businesses. We want to employ more people. We want you to uh, create more wealth for our country. And uh, no doubt, um, uh, coming from a small business background, uh, certainly a small business family myself, um, I think we have great confidence that small businesses who often treat their employees like family will no doubt share the benefits of those tax cuts with those employees. So I think it's a, a self-evident truth um, and we saw it last year. Uh, we saw the benefits of the first tranche of small business tax cuts. Uh, it led to records jobs growth and uh, has led to turning the corner on wages which uh, we hope will continue with uh, this very significant announcement. This is obviously not plan A for your government. Plan A was a tax cut for all of all companies of all sizes. In an ideal world, if you can do this in the Senate, perhaps after the next election, would that still be the plan to have one tax uh, rate for all companies? No, Tom, we'll take a policy to the election and uh, if that plan is endorsed, uh, as our last tax plan was endorsed by the Australian people, uh, we will seek to implement that. So by taking uh, this to the Senate and uh, if it did have to go to the election, uh, then we will seek to faithfully implement what we've taken to them. Now, um, the reality is um, the Senate operates the way it does. Our political system operates the way it does. There's some things we can't change, even from government. Uh, but it's not such a bad thing that we've got additional tax relief going to uh, small businesses. And let's remember these are the businesses that... Bill Shorten tries to equate with the Apple and the Googles of the world. He sort of talks about billionaires and millionaires. Uh, at the same time, he's trying to deny tax relief to small businesses, um, hairdressers, corner shops, small manufacturing businesses, um, small firms that might employ three or four people. He's denying them a tax cut and he tries to go around saying they're somehow millionaires and billionaires. Well, we know they're not. We know that uh, small businesses are fighting very hard. They're competing against bigger businesses and by giving them preference with tax cuts, as we already have, but giving them further preference uh, in this announcement, I think, just strengthens their position, enables them to employ more people, and uh, we're very confident uh, in the end to share the benefits with their employees as well. It looks like it'll hit the bo budget bottom line over four years. I understand, you know, the big tax cut doesn't go ahead, so it gets better over 10. But are you concerned at all that there has been a change in rhetoric from Scott Morrison in particular on the fiscal rule of finding savings for any new spending? He now says that rule can be broken. No, I'm not concerned at all. I mean, Scott Morrison, who I worked with very closely as his assistant, uh, met every single target he ever set as Treasurer. When he said... Uh, this was the uh, number we were going to reach. We either met it or exceeded it. And uh, he did that consistently over his time as Treasurer. Uh, that's not going to change with Josh Frydenberg. And that's in stark contrast to the Labor Party, who promised surpluses and de delivered us deficits. Then they promised us deficits, and then we got even bigger deficits. So uh, I'm very confident with uh, uh, Prime Minister Morrison and uh, Treasurer Josh Frydenberg that uh, our steady hand on the budget, which has led to uh, really the culmination of us announcing an re early return to surplus, uh, is something that we can put a lot of confidence in going forward. I want to turn to religious freedom, obviously, because of this leak yesterday. Um, the only document that we've actually seen in terms of this leak, it gives more protections to the child, uh, not power to the school to discriminate, if you like. There's already that power from the school, but this talks about having a priority on the child that the regard has to go to the best interest of the child as the primary consideration in its conduct, in the school's conduct. Is that the right approach? Well, I think it is. Uh, I mean, no one that I know, uh, and I've spoken to people in Catholic Ed, in Independent, I I've never heard of and never been recalled a story where a student's been turned away uh, because of their sexuality, and I don't think... Uh, I'd never agree to that. I don't think the government would ever agree mm. to that. So let's see what the report says. I mean, I think the important thing for religious organisations is that they get the right to employ people 
uh, who, um, you know, fulfil the ethos and the values of their organisation. I think we all agree on that. Uh, that'll be a central part of, uh, hopefully, uh, what, uh, what the report finally, when it's finally released, says. Uh, but this idea that um, students, uh, gay students, um, can be turned away by schools, I won't support that. I, the government won't support that. Uh, there are existing laws in place, some of which were put in place by the Gillard government. Uh, we're not going to mm. uh, in any way extend those. Uh, so I think this is a bit of a red herring because I'm yet to see an example of any student turned away because of their sexuality and I think that's a good thing and uh, we're not going to in any way, shape or form uh, extend that. What do you make of what's also been leaked out from this, that it would not protect businesses? The example we heard again and again during that same-sex marriage debate was a baker that had to make a cake for a same-sex couple. What this suggests is that, well, that baker, no matter what their religious beliefs, would have to make that cake. Um, well, again, Tom, I mean, I want to see the final report. This, this, this is what I want the report, you know, hopefully to say, and I haven't seen mm. it, but... What I want the report to do, a bit similar to the discussion we're having about we don't want gay students being turned away from schools because of their sexuality, I don't want to see people of any faith being sacked because of their faith. I don't want to see people having their professional registration as a doctor or a lawyer or an accountant or an architect threatened because of their religion. Um, I don't want to see... Uh, the boycotting uh, from government of certain businesses just because the owners of those businesses or people who work within them uh, have a certain faith. I would just want to see people uh, of faith protected. We saw time and time again, you know, we saw the example of the young girl who was sacked because of her faith. We saw the example of, you know, a petition online to have a doctor deregistered because of her Christian faith. I just want to see those people protected. This is what it's about. I think all Australians agree uh, or the vast majority of Australians agree that we should allow people to freely practice their faith without the fear of persecution, without the fear of consequences uh, either being sacked mm. from their job or having their livelihood taken away from them. That's what I want to see in this report. And, of course, I also want to see uh, any organisation, uh, but particularly faith-based organisations, being able to employ and operate consistent with their values. And... Um, uh, I have confidence in Philip Ruddock that he will have um, brought down a review that says that. Having said all that, irrespective of what the report says, it will have to go through our cabinet process, it will have to go through our party room, and that'll be where the final position of government is adopted. And that's why uh, I think this, this, um, this leak about um, student, uh, schools turning away students because of their sexuality, A, it's not happening, and B... Um, if I wouldn't support that, um, and I don't think the party room would support that, uh, again, it's just a red herring. This is not something that's going to come out in the wash. We want to protect right. those people who want to freely practice their faith um, from uh, any um, consequences that might be, ne might be negative to them. And we've sadly well, what about seen example after example of that happening. Michael Sugar, thanks for your time today. Thanks so much.